continuing with the class on mediators of inflammation we have already discussed the cellular mediator we were discussing in which we have discussed the preformed cellular mediators and we were discussing the synthesized de novo cell mediators in which we have already discussed the nitric oxide and arachidonic acid metabolites okay this part we have discussed now we are talking about cytokines now cytokines they are produced by activated lymphocyte the macrophages or dendritic cells they are also produced by the endothelial epithelial cells of the connective tissues also and they mediate the immune reaction inflammatory reaction and i was talking about three important features of cytokines that we need to remember one is pleiotropic effect what does pleiotropic effect means one cytokine can have different actions on different cells then there is one more feature that is redundant that means different cytokines can have same effect and then there is also known as cascade effect that is one cytokines can stimulate the production of other cytokines so these are the very important effect features of cytokines now cytokines in inflammation in acute inflammation uh, major cytokines produced are tnf and interleukin 1 and 6 and chemokines and in chronic inflammation these are interleukin 12 interleukin 17 or interferon gamma okay now uh let us see the any microbial product or any other cytokines or uh, toxin or any other immune complex or maybe physical injury this will lead to activation of macrophage or other cells and they will produce tnf or interleukin 1 Okay, so these are cytokines produced in acute inflammation. Now they can have some systemic effect like fever, leukocytosis, increase acute phase reactant, decrease appetite, increase sleep, and these are known as the systemic manifestations of inflammation. While it can also have some local effects like on the vascular endothelium as well as leukocyte or fibroblast. On the endothelium, it increases the expression of leukocyte adhesion molecules. It increases the production of interleukin one and chemokines. It increases the pro-coagulant activity, decreases the anti-coagulant activity. on leukocytes leukocytes uh, it causes the activation of leukocytes and production of cytokines on fibroblast uh, so both of these actions these are inflammatory uh, it leads to inflammation on fibroblast it causes proliferation and increased collagen synthesis therefore repair so okay so this is how cytokines act that causes inflammation it also are involved in repair and it also are involved in systemic manifestations of inflammation Now there is one more class chemokines. Chemokines they are specific class. They act as chemoattractant for specific type of leukocyte. Now how are they classified? They are classified on the basis of arrangement of the cysteine residues. These are the four types of chemokines: alpha chemokines, beta, gamma, or CX three C, CX C C C, or C chemokines. Alpha chemokines means they are the two cysteine residues separated by one amino acid. While beta chemokines means they are separated by three amino acid. While there is no separation, then they are gamma. And if they does uh, the they lack the first and third cysteine residue itself then it is cx3c now on what cells they act so alpha acts on uh, neutrophils while beta act on all wbc except neutrophil gamma on lymphocyte and cx3c on monocyte and t cells these are the examples interleukin 8 1 and tnf mcp1 rnt serantes or eotexin gamma uh, the example is lymphotactin uh, cx3 example is fracto alkaline okay Now there is one more uh, platelet activating factor. So these are produced by platelet understood, also by basophils, neutrophils, macrophages, mast cells, and endothelial cells also. And the function is it causes platelet aggregation, it causes vasoconstriction, it causes bron bronchospasm. At low concentration, it may also cause vasodilation and increased vascular permeability. So. This is all about cellular mediators. Now let us see the mediators which are present in the plasma. There are three types of mediator: complement, kinin system, and coagulation system. Coming on to the complement system, complement system consists of proteins more than twenty proteins, and they are numbered. Some of them are numbered as C one to C nine, and they have role in both innate and adaptive immunity. The critical step in the complement activation is. is the proteolysis of the complement c3 pathway so cleavage of c3 can occur by any of the three pathway the cleavage alternate sorry the classical alternative or lactin pathway now classical pathway classical pathway is triggered by the fixation of c1 to the antibodies okay alternate pathway they are triggered by the microbial surface molecule like the polysaccharide present on the microbes in the absence of antibody and there is a third pathway lectin pathway this is when the mannose binding lectins they bind to the carbohydrate on the microbe and then they activate the c1 i can show you in diagram these are the three pathway alternate pathway uh, direct activation by the microbes classical pathway by the antibody that binds to the microbes and lectin pathway by the mannose binding lectin on the microbes okay this is how they act So these are the three main ways of activation of the complement system. So complement can be activated. The major, the main step in complement activation is the proteolysis of the complement C3, and which can be done by three of these pathways. Okay.